I think we should teach babies how to play guitar before they learn how to speak, so they'll we'll have a bunch of babies who are really good at guitar. Yes, and then they'll be womanizers, and they'll make more babies by the time they're three. Three nothing me, or maybe, or three one me, or four one me, I don't know, I'm winning. We need to stop letting the ref play, this sucks. I do think that if refs joined, like, the NBA, but, like, still as a ref, mm. they'd be insane. Oh, right. that's a foul. You're out. Technical. You're, you're out. You're out. Oh, your whole team is out. Okay, I win. No, <laughs> that took three seconds, ref. We can't just... Oh, you're out, you're out again. You can't be... For what, the next game? Yep. Also, you're, you're playing as a third-party independent team. There's already two teams here. You can't just... There's not a basket for you. I don't... Okay, I'm declaring myself the winner and the commissioner of the NBA. <laughs> I think you don't quite understand the jurisdiction of an NBA ref. For the first pick... In the NBA draft, I choose Michael Jordan. No, you're, I'm the ref. I can do what I want. I don't think it would be a good pick to choose Michael Jordan now. 60-year-old <laughs> Michael Jordan. I can do whatever I want! I'm a ref, and I'm okay. the commissioner of the NBA. I like that you put ref first. That's really good. Husband, <laughs> loving husband, dad, ref, commissioner of the NBA, and soon to be president of the United States. For the first pick, in the draft, in the war. <laughs> the military draft. I choose Michael Jordan. He's definitely, he has a lot of injuries. That's that not going well. Oh, good first pick. Oh, geez, this is it's looking tough for Russia here. They're, <laughs> they're stuck with every other citizen. They can, and they can pull from the US, which is a rule not a lot of people know about. So second pick, Russia is going with, we're gonna go with, ooh, I just, I think we're going Spielberg. Remember that this is a war, so let's go with, let's go with people who can fight well. <laughs> we, we just think he's got some tangible. famous American. We just, you know, you can't. His character is unmatched. Yeah. His character development. Okay, third, third pick, we're sending it to France. Uh, we were not, we were not prepared. Because you can't just send a pick to whoever you want. You had the third pick since the beginning of the war. Nobody told us this. Okay, sending up to Spain for the third <laughs> pick. <laughs> we pick France. <laughs> okay. Uh, Let's just give one more white country a pick and then we'll move on with the bit. Let's go Canada. What? Let's see what they got going on. <laughs> we pick hockey. I don't know. Uh, Toronto Maple Leaf Queen Elizabeth. I don't know. How do we do guys? How do we do? Former Canadian Justin Bieber weighing in. <laughs> At 179 pounds this week. That's right. Let's make him fight. Baby. Oh, don't make me fight. Justin Bieber when he has a child. It better be able to sing. Or else it's not mine. Does he have it? When do you think Justin Bieber's going to have a kid? Hopefully soon. He's running out of time. Yeah. Justin Bieber died in Zoolander too. Is everyone else freaked out by that? Did we all just move on past the death of Justin Bieber? One great generational divide is the amount of terms to describe weed. <laughs> Our parents every single time have 12 different names they'll run through. It's like as if they've just been briefed on what it is and they're trying to sound like they've known for 30 years. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm familiar with pot. Sure. I've done the, the wheat, the pot, the... Reefer. The ganja. Absolutely. Mary Jane. <laughs> yes, Marijuana. Mary Jane is definitely the, the dorkiest of all the names. <laughs> Did we have to name it, like, just something close to the plant's name? Oh, is that what it is? Marijuana. <laughs> ah, now I get it. I thought it was just... <laughs> you just thought it was completely random? Yeah. As if. The double name is something that we don't really see outside of Long Island for people under 50 years old. Sally, Sally Ann, Mary Sally Jo, Ann. Barbara Ann, Barbara Walters, Deirdre Ann. It's always Ann is the <laughs> middle name. A professor who tries to connect with his students so he takes the test with them. You guys, this is so this easy. Is, this oh. is so easy. I thought you were going to say he was really confused and lost. Oh God, guys, who the fuck is our professor? This guy sucks. What do you say uh, we find his house teach, and burn it down? Teach. I have the address! Teach, I see you just have a backwards hat on. You're still wearing a full suit and you're also 86. You're not really fooling anyone. Thank you for reminding me. I will go now. Farewell and you're, good luck on this you're, test. You're leaving the room? You're just I gonna... can smell the reefer on your breath. <laughs> the Mary Jane. The pot. Somebody smuggled in some doobies. So this is a time test. The devil's lettuce. We nope, forgot okay. about the devil's it's lettuce. Be a silent time. Is test. this helping you guys? Do you think this is helping? Are you offering? <laughs> doing a little study here. Study another one. <laughs> Parents caught me doing a little study. <laughs> oh, did you get the ball? Yeah. Oh no. Where'd you? Where'd the ball go? You, I asked if you got the ball. And did you I said, say yeah. yes? Oh. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Sorry, I think we both kind of interpreted that question differently. Kids never get into business with your brother. He never gets the ball. Kids never vote. I've never voted and look where I am. Guy running for president who didn't prepare for the presidential campaign. I think this speech goes without saying thank you. Goodbye. Okay, so we didn't say much, but he did get clever points. Are we gonna give that to him? He got clever points. TBH, the way this country's running? Yeah, clever points mean a lot. Let's just say, if your shirt's not off. That's good, WWE commentators hosting the next political debate. Uh-oh, is that Bernie Sanders coming in with a chair and he sits down? Dwayne The Rock Johnson, what are you doing? You know how, the, I've never seen the WWE, but whenever I, whenever I am channel surfing and I tune in, some, some wrestler makes an unexpected appearance and just demolishes the, the other wrestlers who are, I guess, yeah, scheduled like to if, wrestle. That's like if Syracuse was playing Duke and then North Carolina. North came. Carolina? <laughs> what are you oh! doing? RKO! <laughs> Both teams are unconscious. Oh, okay. We don't really know how the scoring system's gonna yeah, work. Yeah, it's gonna this. be a one-one tie. I do see WWE, and it's ver it's many variants on the channels as I scroll through. Oh, WWE, WWE the original. WWE, we're just playing nice. WWE story time. WWE house hunters. <laughs> I'm looking for a cage. We've decided to go with the man cage. It does have my walk-in closet, which was really nice. <laughs> and uh, Jeremy the Slasher just really loved how, how there was a, a metal chair in the middle that he could just <laughs> beat the crap out of me with. So our budget is a million dollars and we're looking for a one room, no it's bed, It's gotta no have 50,000 fans. Really, That's... all I'm looking for is seating for 50,000 fans and a ladder. Those are really <laughs> the only two things I can't give up. And I'm not gonna negotiate on that one. Chip and Joanna, like the Fixer Upper show with WWE. Demo day, my favorite. We're gonna knock down the whole house. <laughs> uh, flip or flop. Again, another flop, negative one million dollars. We lost a million dollars because we just demolished that. Here's the before. It's a nice little house. colonial. And here's and the here's after. The after. You can build anything on this, <laughs> on this smoking crater. <laughs> Anybody I know who used to watch WWE? All in the military now. <laughs> well, I was gonna say the exact opposite. They could never be in WWE. They're all under 150 pounds, that is. None of my six, eight, 300 pound <laughs> friends of my, ever watched WWE. None of my WWE wrestler friends are into WWE, I guess is my point. It's a job, right? It's a job for them. And they go home and then they, that actually is interesting. Like they, they go home to their family <laughs> after a big WWE <laughs> cage match. Hey honey, how's it going? How was work, honey? Oh yep, your skull got crushed. What is a WWE practice like? They start with uh, just a bunch of laps and then they just give them all weapons. We're down to eight WWE wrestlers still living. This was a bad... <laughs> <laughs> WWE we, gun this match. Is the practice, was a, so that was a bad. Yeah, we didn't even televise this. Even televise when it. you order food, how do you tell them what you want? I just say, hi, can I please have the chicken? I've been. You just asked for a chicken? If it's anything other than chicken, I say, give me raw and then insert whatever. Raw fish, raw steak, raw salad. Yeah, I do it raw, okay? What I don't like is the people who say, I'll do the salad. I'm gonna do the salad. Can I do the chicken? You cannot do the chicken. Was it a innuendo joke? No, that was a, a picky waiter. Do you want something else? Something not that as gross? The waiter who clearly like made one of the options. So we got the, obviously we got the steak, the chicken. We have the Chef Boyardee. I, I made this Chef Boyardee sandwich. And this one's not on the menu. It's right here secret. in my hand. That's right, in my hand. Cold because I've been rejected. $100,000 cash. I will pay you. <laughs> Just eat this, please. <laughs> I microwaved it and I'm very proud. What were you going to say about people who order food? I was waiting for you to get to the I'll do. I'll do. Well then let's expand on that. Okay. Well, I'm glad we came to a compromise. Sometimes we forget that we're not live. Sometimes I forget that everyone's dead and we're all just living in a simulation and I could end it within a split second by just flipping one switch. Everyone would be dead. Um, so anyone else have a fun fact to start us <laughs> off with? Oh, and my name? My name is Alex the Matrix Landenberg. Yeah, self nickname. Self-made nickname. Any nicknames I prefer? Yeah, The Matrix. 
Alex Landenberg is dead. Okay. <laughs> I also go by Neo or Morpheus Jr. You can just write that on your paper and we'll just get started. Typically, we, 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 we just have the people yes, say Yes, you could move on or you could be enlightened. No. Um, Everyone take these pills. <laughs> Are you going to say like what they are or like give an option? <laughs> Is this like at an AA meeting or something? <laughs> Neo, but he, oh, do, he oh, doesn't. Neo at an AA meeting. No, but they, they don't explain what the pill, like it's not <laughs> red pill or blue pill. It's just take these pills. Take both of these pills. Okay, these are both clearly ibuprofen. They're, they say ibuprofen on them. Dude, Doctor. this guy is so red pilled. Doctors talking behind their patients back in the hallways. This guy's so red pill. I'm gonna give him the red pill, see what happens. The doctors are just wanna see what happens. Guys, we literally <laughs> have not been using this red Doctor. pill. Can we please just see what happens with one person? Doctor who gives you a pill and then runs behind a giant bomb shelter and then peeks out. This is for confidentiality. Yeah, it's pretty much, you know, it's, you no, know, everyone takes this sort they of thing. They run to a giant bomb shelter that they have in the office? Well, like a makeshift one they've put together, like a riot shield sort of thing. Just no, like, this is pretty much standard procedure. We give this pill all the time so just just take this pill and actually just, just wait to swallow for about five seconds here and let's yeah, just give it a swallow see what happens there no you don't need to fill out any paperwork or anything that's fine maybe a will do you have anyone that could fill it out on your behalf no nothing's gonna be wrong with your arm individually you said arm no s no 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 your arm will be fine <laughs> no your arm will be fine Okay, okay. <laughs> Alright. Didn't, I didn't uh, actually ask about my arm, but... This is this is the flu shot, yeah? You will not have to worry about the flu when you take this pill. So remember, give it five to seven seconds before you swallow. And I'm just gonna run back here real quick, okay? And why isn't it happening? <laughs> not saying I, I was hoping that the side effect of explosion. Hey doc, I noticed everyone from the hospital is lined up outside peering in <laughs> through the window. Oh, you know what doc, is diarrhea one of the side effects? Cause I don't think I want to go through that. It, it could be. Explosive. Let's yes. key in on that. <laughs> it's that explosive part. And what's this pill called? What do you want it to be called? Probably gonna be your last words. Or, uh, <laughs> your... Every, you know, every word is one's last word until their next word. That's what I like to say for inspiration. I usually just leave out the, the other part and say, these are your last words, just for the sake of brevity. When they're, they're taking information down and they ask for your last words. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. No, that's really great. No, that's great. I love it. DJ listening to his songs for the first time. <laughs> Wow, who made this? Oh, it was me. It was me. I should have known. I should have known. Yeah, he's got that signature scent. A smell DJ? Guys, citrus just dropped. What do you mean it just dropped? They, they're already well-established smells. Diplo did citrus and lavender. What's your obsession with DJs and house music? Me at the DJs and house music obsession club. <laughs> Hello, my name is Diplo, and I'm obsessed with DJs and house music. Hi, Diplo. You sound like a big man. Let's actually, <laughs> you know what, Diplo, that's great. Let's talk to the big man first. I'm actually more interested in that. Hi, everyone. I notice you're holding just a big cup of beans. If you could just be a little more respectful, I'm, I'm just a man holding a cup. Everyone, eyes on the big oaf, please. Okay, so I noticed that you just I have, have a, a deep voice, but I'm working on my weight, okay? I want to know, he's not tall. He's just fat. <laughs> okay. I don't like this new member Diplo who came in and just started a, insulting me. But it's funny. That's, that's, you know, that's, I'm just trying to lighten the mood for the group. So anyways, big fat man, what brings you here today? I'm working on my weight problem. Okay, wrong, cl that's good. But what is your relation to house music and DJs? <laughs> I'm obsessed with them as well. I guess I should have led with that. Okay, good. Well, that's all we needed. That's pretty much, pretty much everyone has given that answer. So that's, <laughs> so then why would you ask? I think the meeting is pretty much dismissed at this point, right? My name is Diplo, and I'm obsessed with DJs and house music. Hi, Diplo. All right, meeting over. Wait, are, aren't you going to let anyone else talk? Well, Diplo is kind of our high profile. That's kind client. of our big get, and I think it would kind of take away some shine and sparkle from him if we were to give <laughs> everyone else a chance Guys, to go. Diplo's talking. Everyone say hi to Diplo. Three, two, one. Hi, Diplo. What's Diplo's most famous song? Dance, dance, party, I want to party all night with Gorilla the, the Monkey Man. That is absolutely a 30 second song created for a children's television show. That's the equivalent of Lindana. What was it like? I'm Lindana and I want to have fun. Yeah. Was it dance, dance, party, 
What? Well, that was a made up song that I just made up. That's how easy it is to make That's house That's how easy it is to songs. make house songs. You always say that I should make house songs because I, I, do. I know how to use logic. For anyone who's wondering, Aiden produces all of our mu music. We have very little of it, but whenever we have a short film or anything, that's all me. Handheld. And he goes under the alias Aiden Micho in the credits, you'll see. <laughs> Just a little Easter egg. Oh yeah, by the way, it's Micho. Thanks for repeating the last name to me. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that you were <laughs> mispronouncing it. Just wanted to set that <laughs> record straight. I am surprised at how difficult it is for people to pronounce our last name, M-I-C-H-O. I get a lot of Robinson. People go with sure, Robinson. I get so many Smiths. Some people go with numbers. That's always a cop out. What do you think is our best podcast episode? Oh, uh, I'd have to go with one of the ones we've recorded so far, because we covered everything. If you could go to one planet for New Year's Eve, where would you go and when? Uh, <laughs> Mars 1984, because of all the hype. That was a huge year from Mar for Mar for yeah. excuse me for Mars from what I remember because that was the Reagan administration that was pretty much what all the hype was about on Mars. How did they record years in Star Wars? Yeah, that was the big fundamental issue with Star Wars. Yeah, it was the character development, frankly. Super combative, combative George Lucas interview. <laughs> what do you think the biggest issue with Star Wars was? I'll let you answer that first, I, George. I thought it was a pretty good uh, film. I, I, I'm promoting. <laughs> I don't. What's that? You're giving me a very clearly. I'm turning to the look. audience. I'm promoting this film. I'm not gonna say anything bad about it. Do you see any issues with promoting this movie heavily, asking people to come see it? This uh, movie in particular. No, no, it's pretty standard practice. Which director would have made this script work, if any? I directed this, um, and, and I feel like that's a pretty pointed question that you're kind of saying that I didn't do a great job. What's your least favorite part of the movie? I don't have a least favorite part. I'll uh, give you my favorite tough. part. My favorite part is probably, oh uh, man, I mean Luke looking out at the two moons. That was a really, really that beautiful thing. That was shitty. We'd like to thank George Lucas for coming in for this exclusive interview. George, I'd just like to remind you I did send an email to your, your people. I'm available to direct the sequel. That was how you were pitching yourself to direct? George, you freaking ruined Star Wars and now I'm gonna step in What do you mean I ruined Star Wars? Like I, I just, did everything I, else. What do you mean I ruined Star Wars? George, no. you ruined Star Wars episode one. Episode one or four? George, why was that be a question you asked? I clearly said episode well, because one. Because I'm, I'm clearly leading in that I think I ruined episode four. George, what does that mean? There's only been one Star Wars that comes out and it's only called Star Wars. I was taking a leap of faith in assuming that there would be a sequel. Why would would you ask one or four? What does that even mean to me in 1977, George? What does it mean to you in 1977? That's the year that we are currently in. <laughs> was that for the, the record or what? Yes, George. You would never make it as an interviewer. So don't <laughs> think for one second that you could do my job. <laughs> interviewer who before the interview starts begins with a big lecture about how difficult <laughs> interviewing is and how they could never quite do it. Thanks for coming for this interview, George Lucas. I'm yeah, really yeah, absolutely. excited absolutely. to talk about Star Wars. Love the picture. Yeah, thank Just you. before we get into it, a couple sure. things I wanted to get into. Have you ever considered going into journalism? No. Uh, no. Good. Stop for one moment, sit down, I, I and think about the preparation that went into this interview. Did you go to journalism school? Did I go to journalism school? All journalists, all good journalists, are required to go to journalism school if they have any sort of moral code. I went to my community college for two years studying. Uh, I took a class one, one of those years, and it was the most that I've learned since 9-11. You took a class in journalism or just a class? It was in media studies, and I almost passed because of my passion alone. If it weren't for my obsession with weightlifting, you wouldn't be here, frankly. Okay, George, you wouldn't be here with me because you'd be getting some top-notch CNN slot where they're interviewing you about the character development of Star Wars. Yeah, CNN has never interviewed me about character right. development. Because I finished that class and I almost passed. Having learned a lot, I got a job. I'd love to just get to so some questions So don't think for one me. second that you could be an interviewer. Are you going to introduce the other people on the panel? <laughs> this is my wife, Darcy. You brought your wife on yes, my panel? Yes, I brought my wife to prove to you that she's hotter than your wife. Did you bring your wife? I didn't bring my, I didn't know I'm my wife. I'm glad you didn't, George, because I don't want to see you cry this evening. <laughs> so the panel is just me, 
you and your wife. <laughs> <laughs> yes, George, that's correct. I'm glad your eyesight works. Okay. We have a six hour interview ahead of us. I suggest we it's get not started. A, it's not a six hour interview. <laughs> George, you're not the only person we're interviewing today. Okay, well, why would you phrase it like that? I feel like you should have said a, a, a 20 minute interview with George Lucas, followed by what? You have like 23 interviews just straight after this? That's insane. You said you were never interested in journalism, right? Yes, that's Then correct. why are you asking questions? Okay, you wanna ask me any questions? Yes. Who was the worst actor to work with on Star Wars? From what stand? No, I can't answer that. I'm you want a standpoint? Number one, physical attraction. Who was the hardest to look at? And don't say Chewbacca, it's gotta be human skin. Number two, acting wait, wait, ability, whoa. more appropriately lack thereof. This will be a tough one, I'm sure. Number three, religious affiliation. This shouldn't be a tough one. <laughs> okay, this is the good stuff. George Lucas had a problem with one of the actors and with no hesitation is willing to tell us who, because of their religious affiliation, was the worst to work with. <laughs> I have one suggestion before you answer. This sounds a lot like a Jeopardy style show. George, uh, have you ever seen Jeopardy? <laughs> yes. What about this <laughs> is similar to Jeopardy, the game show? Well, because you're holding one of those giant long mics and standing at a board and there's a board filled with numbers behind you. By God, where did this come from? George, does anyone ever call you George of the Jungle? Nope, because you're of the jungle with your hair, do. George, you're skinny now, but you're gonna have eight chins in 10 years. <laughs> George, you're gonna have more chins than billions of dollars. Well, I think that, I think that just about wraps up this interview. And I think your wife knows it. Now, I don't wanna insult George Lucas too much in this bit because he's basically my idol and he's the reason I'm currently an anthropology minor. Not a film major, an anthropology minor. That's right, folks. So George, now that we got that out of the way, Hopefully that made you feel a little bit better. No, that didn't at all. You just, you can't just slap that band-aid on after insulting me for the past maybe 10 minutes. George, I'm gonna keep slapping band-aids on until you're silent. I'm gonna slap them right over your mouth, George. But first I gotta get a couple questions out of you. Okay, can we get to the- George, of no, all the no, shots no, in your leaving. movie, I'm leaving. unbelievably I'm leaving. awful shots of your movie, what was, what stuck out to you as just the beefiest? <laughs> George has left. Next, next director comes up. George announces his departure, quietly. Sorry guys, I'm just so used to screenwriting that I, sometimes it slips out. And then he makes a quip that none of us <laughs> understood whatsoever. Does he talk to himself quietly as he screenwrites? Is that what that meant? Can we get this mic off? George, that's all on you. I know. Then why would you ask that? Again, George, let the questions be asked by those of us who took journalism what's, class. What's your name? My name is Northwestern Almost Grad, Northwestern Community College Almost Grad Johnson. That can't be your name. There's My no... name is not to be disclosed at this time. George, this was a prank interview the whole time. We, did we get you? <laughs> <laughs> Did you have fun, George? This was a prank interview. And no. My, my real no. name is Mark Hamill. No, I, no, I, I'm taking off my wig now, George. No, that, <laughs> first of all, no, you're not. I'm having some trouble with the wig, George. You're clearly not Mark Hamill. You're not wearing any wig or mask. George, just... my wig and mask are, are taking a while to come off. I'm probably going to have to talk to you tomorrow when it's all off, okay? So expect a message from me tomorrow. I'm not no, going to admit to I'm... doing this, though, Mark, as Mark Hamill, <laughs> just because, you know. George, this is my real wife, Darcy. Okay, was the other one not your real wife? No, George, that was just an ant hill with a mustache and you thought that it was more <laughs> physically attractive than your wife. What does that say about your marriage, George? You're not gonna be married to your editor in the next few years. George, as soon as you start racking up money and chins, you're gonna be single. Coming back to that again, huh? Yes, George, yes I am. Okay, that's enough of that. Okay. I'm sticking up for myself. <laughs> That's all you had to say, George. Next question. Who are your inspirations? Um, Dog shit? <laughs> Is that who your inspiration is? No, that's not a person. That's not, not even a clever joke. <laughs> George, it's an open answer. Okay, I, I've always been drawn to war stories. Obviously conflict is big. George, do you think that's a red flag at all? Red flag to who? Somebody who might be interested in you physically. Well, I'm married. Do you think it's a red flag to your, your partner in marriage? 
per se, who you're not going to be with do you mean in a few years, se? guaranteed. Do you think it's a red flag that you're so interested in conflict and war and death and no, destruction? Wait, no, wait, no. You added those last two. And, and are you so interested in the evilness of that and how that can be leveraged in this American capitalist economy for your own benefit? No, you, is that so, a red flag that you're so interested in that? And now we have it on, on tape, you saying it. No, you just said all of that. Right. Shoot. George, could we get you to repeat all that? George, I'm gonna give you a sentence. Can you just read this back to me? Uh, maybe. I. Uh, We're you, going one word at no, a time, George. Can you give me the whole sentence? Sure. I. George, insert middle name, Lucas. And that middle name part is on you. Did you do any research? Oh, so you don't want the full sentence now. Okay. That's, I guess that's my sentence now. I insert middle name George Lucas and the middle name part is on you. Oh, so you don't want the full sentence. Okay. I, Can we get you to repeat that, George? I, is that going to do it for you? What do you mean? No, this is for you. What George, you? why are you still here? You announced quietly your departure like 10 minutes ago. I've been doing ago. this from backstage, the whole the whole thing. Yes. That doesn't change my question. I mean, it's pretty cool. I've been doing it from backstage the whole time. That's pretty cool. Once again, another Hollywood director full of himself and full of chins. Look at this. I'm doing a yo-yo trick. You guys seeing this? George, what was the first movie you ever watched growing up? Uh, was it videos uh, of assisted suicides with doctors who injected their patients who were terminally ill and in pain so that they could go peacefully? Was that the first movie you watched? Because it shows. No, it wasn't. You watching a marathon. It's, they're going, they're going at it for a while. Holy cow, I, I can't could wait never to see do that, And I would never do that. Okay. And I have no respect for people who do that. Well, my daughter's running in this race, so you can zip it, pal. <laughs> I know your daughter's running in this race because I am your daughter. Uh, no, don't, don't touch, don't, don't dance. Does this do anything for you? No. <laughs> are you hitting I'm on I'm gonna get back to you, the race you now. ESPN 30 for 30s, but they ran out of stories. Um, we are here waiting for something to happen. <laughs> We're just gonna do live recording. We're outside the, the Syracuse JMA Wireless Dome. We couldn't get in. Hopefully so. that's something. Right, that's sports, right? Check out this outside of a closed arena. <laughs> Is that not doing something for you? Listen, we said 30 for 30. We're on like 117. <laughs> We got through all 30 of our directors. Now we're on to the, <laughs> the interns are making their own. The history of bowling. Let's do the history of bowling. We already did it, great, okay. Okay, fine, the future of bowling. <laughs> no pins, it's all computers and phones and chips. Is How's that, that? Is that fun? You find that fun? We're gonna now air the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Just the 1987 Super Bowl. Guys selling car insurance at a, at a baseball game instead of hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> get your coverage, get your coverage. Sign your room temperature contracts. Sign your room temperature contracts for car insurance. I see someone up there calling for me, heading up, coming at you. Coming Bundle at you. your home and auto. Bundle your home and auto. Bundle your home and auto. Yeah. Yeah, I'm you looking. You have six hours to talk to me? Uh, like, <laughs> well, I guess we're in the market for insurance. Great. Um, can we have some? Sure. Sign this. Ice cold contract, and it is ice cold. Yeah, I feel it. That is, that's really cold. Wow. Yeah, what? Why? we like to keep them cold so that they're all legal. That's not a thing. I went to law school for it, so you know, don't, don't. You really, went to, you're don't a, cross me. You're a lawyer. Yeah. Well, I used to be a lawyer, and then uh, <laughs> used to be a lawyer, and then I did something illegal. So now I. Still Why are you telling me that? Why are you telling me you did something illegal if you're trying to get me to? I haven't been caught yet, so I'm just trying to lay low. <laughs> I'm not really telling anyone. So you're actually. You're screaming all of this at a baseball game. You're screaming that you didn't get caught. Yeah, I'm hoping to get over the PA system so I can tell everyone. You're hoping, why would you want- Because I think the more people that know, oh. the more people that'll hide me if the government ever finds out. Oh honey, he got. it looks like he got up to the PA system. This is not good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the seventh inning is coming to a close. You know what that means. I broke the law <laughs> and I am no longer a lawyer and now I have to sell car insurance at this baseball game. They don't usually say that. That sounds like it was a different person than normal as well. Yeah, because what they usually say is I broke the law and now I have to sell hot tubs in Kentucky. So that's clearly a different person on the PA system. I just want to go to a ball game and stretch at the seventh inning. Where does, where's America at? That now when the seventh inning comes, you can't stretch. All you can do is sell car insurance. Right, wow. So who's Apple with me? <laughs> is he trying to get us to break the law and sell car insurance? I have a pamphlet here. Well, I have two pamphlets, okay? The first one is outlining all your bundling home and auto options, and the second one is a list of crimes that you won't get put on death row for. It sounds like he's trying to get us to become his competition. 
He's like just as much into us buying his insurance as he wants us to make our own insurance companies. My main goal here is to have a rival in this industry. I want like a 1920s robber baron rival that I can invest He's all my He's giving time very into. apt answers to our questions for us sitting <laughs> thousands of feet away in the, in the outfield. If you have any questions, just kind of shout them out towards the field at a reasonable volume and hopefully I answer them with my pre-prepared speech. <laughs> What's the deductible like? <laughs> Unfortunately, that question is not on my pre-prepared speech. I have the answer and it's killing me not to tell you, but I have to go off my script here. Head to www.https colon backslash backslash www dot. Wow, that, that... Where's my insurance dot net? <laughs> backslash login slash username password. Obviously you would in that case put your username and password in slash 5GA 5G are you writing this down? 5GA Wow, that, Six, seven. Th that really did not sound scripted, especially the URL, which feels like something you, you can't really make up. You kind of got to have that written down. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I, oh, you know, I'm typing it in and that is the URL. <laughs> if you were typing it in out of curiosity, you might as well just sign up for some insurance. Oh no, it's bugged my phone. It, yeah, it bugged my phone. It's got me signed up for all sorts of insurance. Some insur of your phones might be bugged by this. Just come up to the booth and I'll fix that real quick. Okay, I, I clearly see he's got, he's holding a harpoon. He, he's just gonna... <laughs> you won't have to worry about that or anything else with your phone ever again. <laughs> can we, the, Plus, can... if you like whales, you'll be in for a surprise. Uh, was that a teaser? Uh, um, okay, we need to get started with this eighth, seventh inning. Um... I can see some of the fans are getting restless that the eighth <laughs> inning isn't started. If you need to stretch, that's fine. Just check out the insurance database if you can. We this has got to be the longest the ad read I've oh. ever heard in my life. There's, how did they give him this much time on the mic? <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to the first ever live infomercial. My name is Buck Henry. Not the famous Buck Henry. I'm the great, 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 great Buck Henry. <laughs> yeah, it's right. It's true. <laughs> and that's my hype man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He likes to come in at the end of this ad just to make his presence known. He's sh he usually sh is shy. You can hire me for other it. hype stuff too. He does bar mitzvahs. I do, I do this in bar mitzvahs. I make a surprising amount of money. All right, your serve.